Hey, I'm Nick Boy, and welcome to Pocket for Wednesday, the 27th of January. Today on the show, upcoming games, shinies, and brum brum cars. I'm an adult. All right, here's what's been making headlines. The Kickstarter campaign for Pixel Mage Games Heroes song has been canceled. John Smedley posted on the game's page saying that after looking at our funding levels and the reality that we aren't going to reach our funding goals, we've decided that the best thing to do is to end the Kickstarter. We sincerely appreciate all of the support we got from the backers and the Kickstarter community. The game will proceed as planned without the crowdfunding money as private investors have guaranteed the game will come to fruition. Next up, an Insomniac Games has teased its new project, which looks like it could be a side-scrolling underwater romp. The video explores underwater ruins, machinery and sea life, and there are some noticeably collectible shinies in the background. It looks as though they'll drop their full reveal early on Friday morning, so we'll know more then. Butterscotch Shenanigans, the developers of Crashlands, are claiming that a pirated version of their game is being sold on Amazon's mobile game store. The game officially released last week on Windows PC, iOS and Android, but the team at Butterscotch posted on the game's subreddit that someone pirated the APK and uploaded it onto Amazon. While they work to get it removed from that store, Store, they've issued a warning that the download from Amazon's store is not official and could be corrupt. And there's an update coming for Star Wars Battlefront either tonight or tomorrow morning which will see a bunch of new content dropping for the shooter. The update includes support for new modes on the Tatooine map, new outfits and weapon and vehicle balances, the introduction of daily events and challenges and, most importantly, the ability to create private matches so it's easier to play games with friends. Now all I need is a friend! I'm joined now by colleague Edit Monkey to discuss our last news story. Hi. Uh... Dangerous Golf is an upcoming game from Three Fields Entertainment which tastefully combines destruction with golf. The game has been developed by X Criterion people who made the Burnout series. John, you like golf, you like car racing and the Burnout games. Yes. Is this game for you? Hell yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. Screenshots look pretty cool. So uh... far they are only screenshots, there's yeah. no trailer yet. It looks explosive. Yep. It looks like you can break stuff. Mm -hmm. looks, is... Some would say it looks dangerous. <laughs> it does look dangerous. Yeah. No, I'm I'm pumped. I can't wait. Uh, I I actually you, look. You guys probably don't know this. I actually love golf games. I really like. I really like playing golf games. So, but there hasn't been a good golf game, like a really good one, in a while. I think we've had PGA Tour, which was not good last year. You got your Hot Shots games, Vertiginous Golf. These are all games that I actually enjoy playing. Mm. Uh, but I love the look at this one because it looks like it could be the Rocket League of golf games. Oh, totally. It has that sort of over-the-top vibe it does. going on. I think it's not just going to be about golf. There's obviously going to be a wide array of different things that you're going to be able to do in this game. I yep. know you don't like score chases. I know you don't. It's, but yeah. I reckon that will be a mode. So the, the score chasing is... I just don't want it to be a situation where you hit a ball and the most destruction you can do uh, nets you points that wins you the game. That You're right, that will probably be a mode, that's, but, I, that's, but I, that's, I want it to be like Rocket League, yeah. where you go, you can get extra points for your own leveling up, like your own player level, uh, by doing trick shots and that sort of thing. But yeah. ultimately, it's who can get the ball in the hole in the least amount of shots. Yeah, that'll probably be an element. Oh, oh yeah, well, that's the golf. golf element. That's golf. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm imagining there's going to be like a rank up system or something like that. You're going to be able to customize the color of your ball or yeah. like the flair of it, kind of. I'm hoping that's what it's in. It. And I there's think. shots of like a ball bouncing through a bathroom, and I hope that then you could see that's where the flag is. I hope that the start of that game is like the car park outside, <laughs> and you need to work your way through the golf club the to get to the thing. <laughs> yeah, which would be cool. Yeah, that'd be great. We've talked a lot about a game that has two pictures. <laughs> Three. Three pictures. You're right. It completely warranted this level of discussion. All right, that's it for the news. Moving on now to thing of the day. Theme song, me, John. <laughs> bum 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 no. bum bum no. bum. No. Shut up. Bum. Shut up. Oh, it's the thing of the day. In Pokemon Leaf Green, after nearly twenty-six thousand encounters, a young man found what he was looking for—a shiny ponytail. Needless to say, he celebrated accordingly. Thing of the day. And now it's talk through time where you suggest a topic, 
we talk through it. Today's topic comes in from RX Speedster, who says, with an increasing popularity of the sim racing market and the rise of gamer to professional driver programs such as Nissan's GT Academy, do you think racing games really improve our driving proficiency in real life? Now, obviously, out of the two of us, I feel most equipped to answer this question, <laughs> but I'm gonna throw it over to you just so you can feel involved in the conversation. John. Yes. What games are we really talking about here? Mario Kart? No. No, we're talking about the big sim, hardcore sim races that have come out. There's been a massive influx actually in the past sort of maybe about two years. iRacing's been there forever, it's now in its like eighth year I think. Yeah. Project Cars got released last year, Seto Corsa came out a couple of years ago, R-Factor's been a mainstay for a better part of a decade. Yeah. They're the ones that I think uh, Speedster's talking about. Here. Less so sort of your Forzas and... Yeah. What are other car racing like games? Like Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo. Yeah, burnouts. burnouts. <laughs> yeah. I think he's talking about, like, for example, GT Academy. It's based on Gran Turismo, but really GT Academy is not about Gran Turismo yeah. as such. It's That's like the entry point in getting into GT Academy, but from there on, it's actually about driving a real car. So these games, like, you're a really big iRacing yes. um, guy. You give it up every two weeks and say you're going to sell all your stuff, and then the <laughs> next day you come in and you're like, I raced for 40 hours yesterday. That's true. Uh, they are sort of selling themselves on the fact that this is an almost entirely real racing experience. Mm. In my mind, th that I feel like that does prepare you for driving real cars. Like, that can make you a better driver. Yes, Am I right? Yes and no. iRacing is the one that I have the most experience with. Their tracks are incredibly detailed. Not so much graphically, but geographically, they are incredibly accurate. It's Except amazing. for that one iRacing course. No, no, no. It, iRacing was fine. It was Project Cars that had the stupid fence in there that doesn't exist. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Oh, it's, yeah. all we heard about We could for be here for half an hour fence. about that. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It's not there. <laughs> Anyways, so, sim racing. <laughs> I think that there are elements of sim racing that could transfer into real life. Mm -hmm. For example, driving in amongst other cars, being aware of your surroundings whilst you're driving. Yeah. I was talking to V8 supercar driver Scott McLaughlin about this, Ooh. who I've raced a bit in on iRacing. He said the main thing that he learns from racing online is actually reacting to accidents around him. Right. It's not so much... Uh, like driving as such because... Like when to shift and yeah, cause, I indicating. Mean, he, he already knows all of that, but he said the, the main difference is that in a sim, you don't get the seat of the pants feel in the car. And he said that's how they interpret yeah. mostly driving around on a track. It's like you go through a corner, you can feel the car slipping just from mm. movement in the seat. They do have those rigs that simulate that sort of experience. Mm. You've been in those. I haven't been in those. Yeah, I've been in, I've been in one that was considered top of the line probably a couple of years ago. They've definitely progressed since then, but this one was pretty violent. Like, it threw you around a bit, but... So you don't feel like that would give you some sense of you could feel when the car was slipping out of control and being able to... Not really. The main the main difference is G-Force. Yeah, right. You, you just cannot simulate G-Force, and the, the G-Forces that you feel in a car are huge. Well, I went on that hot lap. Hmm. Was that a V8? That was a V8. Yeah, so I could see the driver, he wasn't struggling, but he was fighting against the car the whole time, like with the wheel, it was constantly like that. And I could feel the movement of the car, and I figured that's something you could replicate with a rig. But the thing you wouldn't be able to replicate is I was kind of just stuck back in the seat. And he wasn't even punching it as fast as he no, would it was in wet. an actual race. And it was wet. But I was like jammed back against there, and that is an experience where you go, if you are actually going faster, like those... Formula One guys. Yeah. They're... I don't know how they breathe. Yeah, they're crazy. They go through corners at ridiculous speeds and experience about three Gs worth of, like, force. And they do that seven to eight times a lap yeah. over two hours. Yeah. Like, the physicality behind that is nuts. Have you, if you've ever seen their necks, their necks are massive because they've got to hold their head right. in, in a position yeah. so, so it they're not like this. And, and break off like, yeah. and hit a car behind them. So before my hot lap, I was speaking to the driver, uh, Marcus Ambrose, and I asked him whether or not he thought that these sort of sim games were good for real life drivers. And he said that he did. He thought that they were something that were really useful for drivers, being able to keep up on top of uh, new cars or uh, just being able to practice without actually having to get in the car. But I think that by that he meant it wasn't necessarily making them a better driver, it was just keeping them on top of the things they already knew. It's Yeah, kind of like keeping your hand in, I guess, in a way. And you can use sims to learn new tracks. I know all the F1 teams have amazing simulators that they mm. practice on. They have drivers dedicated just to driving the simulator 
learning new setups for the car. Yeah, right. And then, like, guys. So you like, can you can learn a track that's in Japan while yeah. you're in Paris, having yeah. never driven on it. Mark Weber used to practice in his simulator for his team all the time. Right. Um, just basically to keep his hand in. Yeah, cool. So yeah, I think it is a good learning tool. But there's two things that sim racing can't teach you. One, neck thickness. <laughs> yes, definitely neck thickness. No, so the things that they can't teach you are being physically fit, because mm -hmm. that's an utmost it's requirement. It's up to you, buddy. Start and lifting the, things. The second one is fear. In order to be a race car driver, you need to just be able to suppress any fear you have. Yeah. You need to know that every time you go out on the track, you could die. Yeah, right. But you need to let go of that because it's like if you if you drive like that, you will never win. You, no, you won't. Yeah. Because you won't push hard enough. You'll be slow. You'll be at the back of the pack. That's so interesting. And you're never going to actually get that from a game. Even in like VR and stuff, you still know in the back of your mind that you're sitting in a room somewhere. Yeah, in a sim, you can push at 110%. You can put it in the fence and you know you won't get hurt. And then you can just jump back in the car and go again. So do you think you'll ever conquer your fears and become a race car driver? I uh, don't think I will ever drive a race car. I will never drive a race car. I can safely say that. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Edit Monkey, too scared to drive a car. All right, that's it for the talk through. Do you guys uh, play sim racing games? Let us know in the comments. And while you're there, let us know what we should talk through tomorrow. And while you're on the internet, check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket at Nick Boy, at Pierreth, and at GG at Monkey. There are links to everything I just said in the description below. And a quick reminder that there's no gameplay video today, as while you're watching this, I'm currently out shooting a promo for Good Game, unless you're watching this tomorrow, in which case I'm probably back here shooting the news. And tomorrow, Thursday, I will be finishing up our live stream of Oxenfree. Excited. Which I know you're excited about. Excited. Uh, he's not being sarcastic as well. Yeah, he usually is being the, sarcastic. I sat through the whole stream on the couch watching it, it last week. It was it, great. It was adorable. It was like I was a dad playing a game and he was the son sitting on the couch. Like I let him occasionally make a decision and feel like he was involved. He was not involved. Uh, all right, that is tomorrow on our Twitch channel at 3 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Until then, Nick Wire. GG at a monkey out. Bum, no! Bum, 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 bum. Go away. Old Man River! <laughs>